My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Forum. This evening we have a distinguished guest. Uh, we're welcoming uh, Pastor Paul Young uh, to the Waukegan area. He's the pastor of the Shalem uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church located at 1105, 1109, 1105 is correct, 1105 uh, Pine Street uh, in uh, Waukegan, Illinois. Pine Street, of course, is just um, uh, south of, on, uh, off of Glen Flora. Um, I, I like to say this, that this program is, uh, uh, was the producer is Lamont Taylor, uh, a member of the uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, a very good uh, a friend of mine. And I'd like for Pastor Young to tell our listening audience a little bit about your personal and professional background. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Brooks. I appreciate being here on your program. I enjoyed our time together on the radio program, and I'm glad that you're able to have me here as well. Mm -hmm. um, I am a pastor in the Lake Region Conference of Seventh-day Adventist, and uh, we currently have, we currently cover about five states. And uh, my first assignment was in Evansville, Indiana. And uh, while I was in Evansville, Indiana, I actually pastored three churches. I pastored mm -hmm. a church in Evansville, I pastored one in Terre Haute, Indiana, and I pastored one in Jeffersonville, Indiana. And so I, I had quite a, a long commute uh, visiting each church week mm -hmm. after week. Mm -hmm. And um, I was there for about a year and a half, and uh, I was called up by, my, um, by the president of the conference to be assigned to the Waukegan-Evanston area. So now I pastor uh, the Shalem Seventh-day Adventist Church in Waukegan, along with the Evanston First Seventh-day Adventist Church in Evanston, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, you're no stranger uh, in front of the camera and behind the mic, and I understand it that uh, your educational background included uh, broadcasting, right? Uh, yes, yes. I went to Southwestern Adventist University, uh, where I achieved a Bachelor's of Science degree in communications. I also have a minor in psychology, okay. and uh, so I'm I'm familiar with the. Uh, television studio setting uh, uh, just from my 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 time as a student uh, on campus uh, doing things similar to to this type of setting interviewing uh, individuals and so forth so um, I, I I wanted to stay behind the camera but the Lord had other plans <laughs> <laughs> right right well Pastor Young uh, I was uh, I mentioned at the top of the program that the producer is Lamont Taylor of this, of this uh, program. And, and uh, we're very good friends, even though I am a uh, Protestant, uh, Baptist, you know, and he's uh, the Seventh-day Adventist, but mm -hmm. we still are great friends. Mm -hmm. now, now, there are approximately 3,000 denominations uh, in the world, and I was want to know what piqued your interest in Seventh-day Adventist Church? Uh, great question. Um, <laughs> most people in the Seventh-day Adventist denomination uh, are what you would call transplants. They belong to denominations, uh, other denominations were brought up and, and things like that in that, era, in that time. Okay. Um, I personally uh, have uh, family members who are Seventh-day Adventists, but I didn't grow up with them, my dad in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember as a young child, uh, I grew up in a Pentecostal home, uh, oh. and uh, as a young child, I would, every week, I would not miss Sunday school. It was just the best ever. Uh, you know, you, I learned um, 23rd Psalm, uh, Psalm 1, uh, you know, the Lord's Prayer, okay. the Beatitudes, you know, all that core uh, Christian values. And I, I will never trade my, um, my heritage as a, as a uh, being raised in a Pentecostal, a community, one who, uh, a community that lifts up holiness and the standard of, of righteousness before the people of God. And, um, but when I was uh, about 11 years old, I asked my, my, my dad, when I visited with him, why do we go to church on, on Saturday? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, uh, because the Bible says that's when we're supposed to go, you know, it's the seventh day. And so I quipped back, no, it's not. It's not the seventh day. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, look, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. See, Sunday is day number seven. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And he said, go get a calendar. And so, you know, I thought I had him on the ropes. Okay. I went and I got a calendar. As I was looking at the calendar coming back, I saw that Sunday was the first day of the week. Right. And, uh, you know, as a child, everything begins and starts new on Monday. You know, everybody yeah. goes back to work on Monday. You know, kids go back to school on Monday. So I was thinking Monday was day one. Mm -hmm. And so after he showed that to me, uh, I, I just instantly realized that, wait a minute, so if, if, if Saturday is day number seven, I had a question for my, my grandma, you know. So when I went back uh, to my um, to home after visiting with my dad for the summer, mm -hmm. I asked my grandma, I said, Grandma, why do we go to church on, on Sunday? Um, and pretty much uh, her response was more emotional. Um, I didn't get much of a factual background on it, just, uh, just a lot of emotion that, that followed um, about... Uh, uh, my dad filling my head with, uh, you know, with stuff. <laughs> um, and I'm a, I'm a very cognitive, um, research-minded person. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I need to see the facts. I need to investigate. I need to find out. And so um, throughout my life, I did, I did research here and there. Um, but I never gave my life to the Lord. Never gave my life to the Lord. Uh, until I was about 22 years old. And when mm. I did give my life to the Lord, a lot of the things that I learned as a child, both from my uh, time as a uh, attending Pentecostal church as well as sometimes at attending an Adventist church, kind of started merging together. And as they merged together um, and I studied, I, I made a decision to be, become a part of the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. Um, the teachings of Christ uh, are solid within the church and um, we also espouse what is going to happen in the end of time. Mm -hmm. Not to say that we are precise and detailed about it because no one knows the day or the hour, mm -hmm. but at the same time, just as how God raised up John the Baptist to, to proclaim uh, that he is coming, that the Messiah is coming, so too I believe that in the end of time, God is going to raise up not just uh, one individual, but hundreds of individuals mm -hmm. to declare that we, we as a people need to get ready for the coming of the Lord. Now we have one Bible, you know, but uh, <clears throat> why 3,000 denominations? Um, that's a interesting um, study. You know, as human beings, there is this, there is this idea that, we, that we've existed all along. And so if you go back 40 years, many of us weren't here 40 years ago. Many of us were, but many of us weren't. And for some reason, I think that I'm, I'm, I should know everything, even though I've been on the earth at a shorter period of time. You ask teenagers and they'll act just like that, right? They'll, okay. they'll act like they know everything. Um, but time is a big component in, in the answer to your question. For example, you have uh, the first, the, well, it's not necessarily the first church, but uh, Martin Luther, uh, who, who struck the, the blow to, to really put emphasis to the Reformation, um, mm -hmm. where the Catholic Church was, was, um, was pretty much the, was the Christian church. Mm -hmm. And anyone who challenged its authority would, uh, would, would, not, um, would not live, mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, because the church believed that it had the authority to execute uh, the, the judgments of God mm -hmm. upon those who were not walking contrary to the word of God. And so Martin Luther did not want to separate from the church. However, he wanted to, the church to, be, to come in line with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so a, a mantra was, was drummed out, sola scriptura, the Bible and the Bible only. And they were, they were going to follow the Bible and the Bible only. Now, Martin Luther followed the Bible as best as he could. Imagine if you're in a dark room for days, someone would do you really, really bad, uh, would, would make you uh, very uncomfortable and would not be doing you a favor if they came in and just took you out in the middle of the day where the sun was just the brightest. It wouldn't help you one bit because it would just, you wouldn't be able to see clearly, you wouldn't be able to focus, you would be just as useless as you, as you would be in, in a dark room. And so what God did was, as the Bible was becoming more predominant, he shed enough light on Martin Luther, not to blind him, mm. 
but just to give him for his time and for his generation enough light and so what happens is the Lutheran church was born they they nicknamed them Lutherans because they followed Luther okay. now Luther died and the people continued to follow the teachings of Luther mm -hmm. but a few and this is human nature a few continued the study mm -hmm. and as they continued the study they realized that wait a minute we don't need to baptize infants because infants are not conscious to make decisions to accept Christ. Mm -hmm. And so they were called Anabaptists or anti-Baptists because children were being baptized. And so when they were saying we don't need to baptize our children, they were called Anabaptists, mm -hmm. which over time the name dropped off to become Baptist. Now they were not, um, they were not trying to start a new denomination. They were just, they, would, they had received a little bit more light than what Luther received. And as is custom with our, our, our human nature, when something begins, it begins as a movement. It begins as a movement. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. in a short period of time, or when the leaders fall away, or when the leaders die and pass on, uh, that movement becomes a monument. And so instead of people using the uh, building upon what they were taught, they settle down and they become comfortable in that tradition and in that belief system and they don't continue to pursue a course of study. And so what happens is the, those who are continuing a, to pursue a, a course of study have to break away because the others actually are pushing them out saying we don't want you to be a part of us because Luther didn't teach that, mm. you see. And mm. so it, 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 over time as the light shined more and more onto a perfect day. We were coming out of the dark ages, as historians call that time period, where the Bible was just locked away and no one, we were told what to do, what the Bible said. But now, because of Luther and others, Zwingli and Huss and Jerome, these, these men of history who were great reformers, they built on that and they added to the light that was given. And, and a text in the Bible that is very prominent to me is Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 that simply says the path of the just is as a shining light shining more and more to the perfect day and what that what that tells me is each one of us we're on a a, a journey with God mm -hmm. and the light that is given to us we need to walk in that light and we should not burden others with with light that they have not yet fully comprehended or received mm -hmm. again it's like taking a flashlight and shining it in someone's face it's not going to help them God is the one who reveals his light to his people in due time. And in certain instances, uh, there are people he will not reveal his light to uh, because it would not be a benefit to them. Uh, and I'll give you an example quickly here. The, the, the disciples uh, wanted to know more uh, of what Jesus was going to do after the resurrection and so forth. And he said, you know what? There are many things I desire to t share with you right now but you can't handle it, mm. you see. And then another instance when they said, Lord, will you, will you now restore the kingdom to, uh, to Israel? And he said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons that is laid up in my father's hands. Basically, there is information out there. There is more light out there, but what can we really handle? And so individuals have received, some individuals have received more light than others, and they're more responsible than others. We in America here have received great light, more than people in, in, uh, in remote uh, parts of the world. And mm -hmm. so it is our responsibility to not only share that light, but to be careful in how we share that light with others. And so mm -hmm. to answer that question about the many denominations, Luther was around, what, uh, 15th century, uh, 15th century or so forth. So that was mm -hmm. just over five, 600 years ago. But the light just keeps coming. But what happens is the majority of the people, once the, the movement becomes a monument, it's very hard to continue to, to, to get up and move. Once you've built houses and established uh, structures and organizations, uh, if that organization is not willing to move forward, that organization will become a monument. And so, hence I see throughout, uh, many denominations have contributed to some aspect or some doctrine of the Christian church. And the Seventh-day Adventist church is just one among Many, many of the teachings that we hold as Seventh-day Adventists come from the roots of Luther. They come from the Methodist background. They come from the uh, 
uh, Pentecostal background, the Presbyterian background, uh, we have those, mm -hmm. those roots mm -hmm. that, that run through because we see the threat of God's truth through these various denominations. And so we uh, are called upon to preach a peculiar message in these last days, which is to call people to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, hence the name Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. Pastor, I have had many pastors of different denominations on the program. I've had the Methodists and I had the uh, uh, the Pentecostal, um, you know, the Baptist and, uh, you know, uh, and Apostolic, yes, you sir. know, and so forth. And I said, we have one Bible, but we have youth. Uh, we have a lot of problems with our youth in mm -hmm. today's world now. And, and we have youth that are coming in the church, in the, the, from different homes, and they are attached to the church Mm -hmm. from the home that they're from, right? Yes. Just say you are from uh, yes, uh, uh, Seventh-day Adventist and I'm from the Baptist and so forth, you know. But, but what would guide them to realize that they have to be saved? Doesn't matter what denomination that you, mm -hmm. you're from, you gotta be saved. And are you saved more in one denomination than the other? And, it, it, uh, uh, I, I want to get. I want to make sure because we probably have a lot of youth watching the program, mm -hmm. you know, with their families and so forth. So, how would they determine um, what uh, denomination that they should get involved with? As a matter of fact, it probably won't be denomination. You know, mm -hmm. it, you have to be saved, and mm -hmm. and as a we could, we could talk about how how to be saved. You know, as you go Absolutely. along. You know. Um. <clears throat> Well, I would say this, that imagine a person living in a, a part of the world that is remote and very okay. little access to, to what we call civilization, okay. where we have printed pages of the Bible and so forth. Um, imagine that individual who's that distant away. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only difference between him and us is the distance between us. Yet still, the same Spirit of God who speaks to that individual speaks to us. Mm -hmm. And so he may not know Jesus as Jesus, but, but, but he may be impressed to realize that there is a power beyond him. And he might call it some other name in the name of his native tongue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2 of how God reveals himself in a, in a, in a, in a specific way to individuals who are without the law, so to speak, or without an understanding of what the Word of God is in detail. Mm -hmm. Yet still, nature reveals that to them. And so, you would call him a true non-denominational person, mm -hmm. because he is not affiliated with our organized denominations. And so, the question is, would that individual be saved just as how someone else, even though they're in a different denomination than us? And the answer is absolutely yes. Why is that? Because God is not looking at your organization or the color of your skin or the, uh, the value of uh, your wealth or you know, your wealth or whatever it may be. He's looking at the heart of an individual. And so many people who are in, in, uh, in all these different denominations will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. And many people who are all over these denominations will make it into the kingdom of heaven. So the qualification is not denomination. The qualification is, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Now, if you know, the good thing about Jesus is if you know him just a little bit, like the thief on the cross, a little bit, mm -hmm. or if you know him a lot, like the apostle Paul, <clears throat> it doesn't matter how much you know him. As long as with all your heart, if you know him just this little bit with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, he has a seat at the table for you in heaven. And that's really what it boils down to. And if we know Jesus, where we are in our relationship with him, I can guarantee you, the Bible says the spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. All truth doesn't mean that you will have the sum total of God's truth when you get, uh, while you're here on earth. 
It just simply means he will guide you into all truth. That means that if you, if you die with only knowing or understanding 50% of God's whole truth, mm -hmm. you know, and, you're in, and you have a full heart towards God, when you, when, when you are received in glory, when the Lord comes again and, and resurrects his people and, and take them home, then the Bible says, uh, I, you know, now I know in part, as 1 Corinthians 13 describes, mm -hmm. but then I will know the full truth. He will guide me into all the full truth. And so for each and every one of us as Christians, um, the focus should be like Hebrews uh, 12, 2 says, if you would look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, then you can guarantee, no matter what denomination you're in, that you will make it into the kingdom of heaven. For 23 years, <clears throat> I've been hosting a radio program and 13 years the community forum. Mm -hmm. I try to get as many ministers as possible, as many pastors as possible on the program because, and I may fast forward this, whatever, when you're gone, mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 when you leave this world, everything you have is gone. Yes, sir. But the things that you do for others will remain as your legacy. Yes. And I want each of the ministers who's been on the program to leave a legacy behind. <clears throat> and it's only forced the one direction that the people are being saved. Now, uh, I like to go back. I could ask you, how do people be saved? But let's go back to creation. Mm -hmm. Why, uh, why the, was there creation? Why did God create the heavens and earth? Well. Now, I, I know an easy answer would be for his glory. Well, see, I was actually <laughs> gonna, I was actually gonna come back with, uh, give, you, give you another answer. Okay. Uh, an answer that a child will understand. Okay. Because he's God. <laughs> okay. And, and he's a creator. He creates. And so for him not to create means that he's not a creator, but he is a creator, so he creates. And okay. so uh, he has created many things before he created us. Yes. He's created many worlds yes. before he created us. Uh, and, and so I believe that, I believe, and, and I would like to say this and, and you know, uh, as long as your editing is good, don't splice it up, uh, <laughs> that I believe in aliens. <clears throat> the Bible speaks of aliens, uh, calls them angels, that they came to this earth. Mm -hmm. They're not from this earth, they're alien to this earth. Uh, and I believe that God has other uh, creatures, other beings who are outside of uh, even the realm of aliens. The Bible speaks of uh, individuals in, uh, in around his throne, the, the um, the four beasts, mm -hmm. you know, that, mm -hmm. that are around his throne and so forth. And so, uh, and the description of those beasts, it's nothing like humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we have 24 elders also around the throne of God. And the Bible says these 24 were redeemed from the earth. So these are individuals who came out of the earth. And I believe that points to the, the time when Jesus was resurrected. It says that others were raised up out of the grave. And when Jesus went to heaven, they were sort of, the, not sort of, they were the first fruits mm -hmm. of the power of his resurrection. That just like how you have the former rain and the latter rain, the former rain is where, uh, you know, the rain comes down and uh, the, 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 uh, the fruit kind of come, it comes up and brings forth a, a early grain, a green, makes it nice and green. These, this is the first fruits. Mm -hmm. And then you would have the, the harvest at the end. And so those who went with Jesus to heaven are the first fruits and then latter uh, will be us who are caught up to meet him in the air. Um, I believe that, 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 uh, that God has created other worlds out there. Uh, but the Bible speaks about us that we are created in His image. Mm -hmm. um, I don't understand what that means fully. Uh, you know, scholars can give you a great explanation, but, but mm -hmm. I personally don't understand what that means fully. Um, but I do believe that the purpose of us being here is simply, like you said, going right back to what you said now, is for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. It is for the glory of God. And, and God's glory is a glory that is a benefit. It's not something that he takes and keeps 
for himself and says, oh, look at me, I'm, I'm the man, you know, I'm God, I did all of this. But really and truly, the glory given to God is really what is due him. Um, mm -hmm. We celebrate when uh, the Chicago Bulls win championships and the Blackhawks win championships and, and the Cubs maybe one day some, you know, <laughs> um, win, you know, win championships and so forth. And we give them glory. Okay. We give them the credit that they are due. And so as human beings, the fact that I'm breathing his air, the fact that I'm, I, I have been formed in his image, these hands, this face, these feet, uh, are formed by God, I give him glory, mm -hmm. you see, because he is deserving of it. And so God has created us and he will continue to create. Uh, you know, um, the Bible says that when this whole thing is wrapped up, he will create a new heavens and a new earth. So he is still a creator. He is still a creator. And no matter what the uh, enemy has uh, uh, tried to do, God is God's plans towards his people will not uh, be unfurled. It will not uh, fall to the ground, but it will stand. So our God is a creator and uh, he just he just loves to, to 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 bring peace and happiness to to his creation and his creation automatically responds by giving him glory. Now in heaven, did he have a Satan part of his angels? Uh, yes, uh, the devil the devil um, was in heaven. Um, he was a perfect angel. Tell him the archangel. The archangel, right? And uh, you know he was he was uh, an angel who was at the right hand of God, okay. and the Son of God, the pre-incarnate Christ, uh, Jesus mm -hmm. was also at was I'm sorry, Jesus was at the right hand of God, and Lucifer was at the left hand, probably okay. also, and so. <clears throat> But Lucifer was jealous, became jealous of Jesus and his role and his position. And I, and I, and I remember being in seminary class and um, uh, one of my fellow pastors, uh, Pastor Ribacek, uh, he mentioned, he, he got up and made a, 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 a presentation. And he said that the Son of God has always, and it's so beautiful, he ever lives to reveal who the Father was or mm -hmm. who the Father is. So even before we were created, Jesus was revealing the love of the Father to the angels. You see, because even mm -hmm. the angels cannot stand in the very presence of God himself. Mm -hmm. The Bible says they veil their faces. You see, and so the revelation of who God is, is coming from the Son of God, even in heaven. And so Lucifer wanted and coveted that position. He wanted to be the one to be able to go into counsel with the Father. And we talk about, you see counsel in the book of Job where, you know, uh, God asked Satan, where are you coming from? Mm -hmm. And so forth. And so um, he wanted that position. He coveted that position. And he started, um, he started spreading lies about God. And, um, you know, and permit me to just back up a little bit and just kind of give you a, a background, especially for our audience. You can mm -hmm. go and look up these passages of scripture. Uh, there's a story in the Bible, and many stories in the Bible are really a miniature picture of the big scheme of, of things that's going on uh, in the world. Okay. And so you have a story in the Bible with Absalom, the son of David. Mm -hmm. And Absalom, the firstborn of David, mind you, the first, actually, no, he wasn't the firstborn. He was, I think, the thirdborn, the thirdborn of David. You had Amnon who was born first. Uh, Absalom wanted... Um, his father's position. Okay. He wanted his father's position and the Bible said he would stand, he would sit at the gate and people would come in and he would, then they would say to him, he would say, well, you know, dear friend, why is your travel, why are you traveling, why are you downcast? Well, I'm coming to the king to see him. He said, oh, you know, the king is so busy. The king is so busy and he doesn't have time to see you. But you know what, if I were king, I would be able to help you in your situation. And the Bible says he stole the hearts of the people. Mm. And so that is a miniature picture of really what was going on in heaven, how the devil would go around and tell his, tell, tell his uh, sob story, get sympathy from the other angels. And the Bible says one third of them were cast out with him okay. because he was able to win their confidence. And that's a similar, similar situation that happened in, the, uh, in, in uh, the story with Absalom. 
and how uh, Absalom was able to win some of the people of Israel over to his side and they were they were trying to overthrow King David but David prevailed and Absalom was slain and so that whole story is a symbolism or a a a model of what took place in heaven and how the devil in the end will ultimately be destroyed but yes he was a covering cherub in heaven but pride overwhelmed his heart and it also shows us that even in heaven the freedom of choice is there for the angels okay that's, that's you see good point this is what it's going to lead, lead to yeah yeah right right so it was even though there was perfection there in heaven mm -hmm. but he still allowed freedom you of still, choice you have freedom of choice because god has his children and his children choose to obey him choose to follow him the angels choose to follow him mm -hmm. you had some who choose chose not to follow him and they were cast out and the reason why they were cast out was because their rebellion would spread and and someone can simply say well pastor why why did god why didn't god just eradicate him why did god allow him to come to this earth maybe that would be a, a good follow up because why did he allow him to, to to come here and cause the mess you know whenever you have someone that disagrees with you the best thing you can do is to give them an opportunity to expose themselves because had god destroyed satan then the claims that satan had against god which was that god is unfair and god is unjust uh, would be true so for example we in our history in america here have individuals who spoken against the status quo mm -hmm. The Malcolm X's, the Martin Luther King's, you know, the Gandhi's of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and what happened to them? They were killed. Their death was actually seed for the message that they were sharing. You see? And so did, when those individuals die, died, did their message die or did their message even become greater? Mm -hmm. And so, if God had destroyed Satan, Satan's message would seem more true now that he is wiped from the face of creation. And it would create more doubt in the minds of the other angels. But to let that individual play it out, and it played out until the time of the cross, where not only did humanity, but the heavenly host and all of God's creation was able to see the contrast between Satan's love for power mm -hmm. and God's power of love. It's amazing that the creator was killed by his creation. Mm. And he willingly, Okay, that's the thing, he willingly came and that's, that's, that's why you have to love Jesus. <laughs> that's why you have to love Jesus because the creator Jesus Christ himself mm -hmm. came and was beaten by his creation to save us, to <laughs> save the very creation, uh, you know, that he created. And so he knew, he knew that that was the only way. Now, someone may be saying, I don't understand, Pastor. Mm -hmm. I really don't understand it. Let me explain it to you this way. You had a, you had a question you said about how are we saved. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want you to imagine a, a great uh, chasm and before that chasm ever existed it was one level plane, mm -hmm. God and humanity. But then when sin came in it created a chasm and now the thing that separated humanity from God is death. Mm. And death is that chasm from which once you fall into that chasm you cannot come out of it. You are, you are lost forever. You are, eternity. Your eternity. You are, you're lost, eternally lost. And so now that chasm is there. God is here. Humanity is here. And humanity cannot get back to God because no one can die and resurrect themselves to come to be over here. Okay. God now becomes one of us and comes over here. Mm. And his life over here, he lives his life as a man. Mm-hmm. And he lives his life as a man, perfect unto God, died on the cross, 
and he is the only human being, he is the only human being to have died the second death. Because mm -hmm. there are two deaths in the Bible. The Bible refers to the death that we now die as a sleep. And the good thing about a sleep is you can wake up. Okay. okay. <laughs> you see? But the other death, there is no waking up from that other death. The Bible says, speaks about that in Revelation chapter 20. Uh, you know, that this other death, there is no waking up. This is the, the Bible says this is the second death in Revelation 20. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus is the one, when he died on the cross, he didn't die a death that you and I died. He died the death that we actually deserve to die. Mm -hmm. He died the death that many who don't choose him will die themselves because they rejected his death for them. Mm -hmm. And so they will have an eternal death from which there is no waking up from. Once the fire uh, consumes and burns this individual up, it will be like as if they were never born. It would be like a, a, a uh, position of, of non-existence, basically. Uh, and, and, so, and this brings out a point quickly here that as, as Seventh-day Adventist, as a person of faith, I, I, um, I, I read the scriptures, uh, but I do not see a eternal burning um, hell. I see a, a burning hell, but that burning hell is also will will burn out. So once fire has consumed what it has consumed and there's nothing left for it to consume, it will burn out. The Bible says in Malachi chapter four, the wicked shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. And so the, just like how the devil will cease to exist, mm -hmm. also we as well. Um, but going back to this chasm, Jesus dies that death for us. And when he dies that death for us, he, res he is resurrected. Why? Because he has life within himself. Mm -hmm. He couldn't send an angel to do it because an angel is created. And that mm -hmm. created angel doesn't have life within himself. That a created angel is borrowing life from God. You and I are borrowing life from God. You and I are borrowing life from God. But God doesn't borrow life from mm -hmm. anybody. He is life itself. Mm -hmm. And so he is able to die the death as a man and resurrect. So he's able to jump in that chasm and while he's in that chasm, he builds a bridge between humanity and divinity. Mm. And then he says to you and I, now walk across this bridge by faith. Walk across this bridge by faith. That's how we are saved if we keep our eyes on Jesus as we're walking across this bridge by faith. Now, if we're saved by works, then what that means is we would have to be building our own bridge. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that the bridge is already built. When Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, the bridge, the connection between heaven and earth was established. And what he, God is saying to us is, walk across that bridge because the bridge is built for you. And that bridge is the body of my son. You can connect to him. He is both God and he is both man. And he connects heaven to earth. And if you walk across him, you have no doubt to be saved. Yes. And it doesn't matter what denomination that you're in, if your denomination preaches that Jesus Christ came to this earth, died for your sins, and there's nothing that you can do to add to the bridge building, then you are on the right path to being saved by God. It doesn't matter what denomination that, <coughs> excuse me, that you <coughs> believe in. Uh, we have to have pastors like you to teach the congregation how to read, study, and yeah. interpret the Bible. But, but I get a problem, have a problem with interpreting the Bible. You don't have to in interpret the Bible, do you? Uh, you read and study, but, but the, Bible, the Bible is se self-explanatory. Do you have to interpret the Bible? You know, some people, would, some people would disagree with you because that's the reason why we have so many different denominations because you say, well, some people read it this way and some people read it yeah, that right. way. Um, Jesus, in a conversation with, um, with some of the scribes and Pharisees, uh, he shared a passage, he shared, there's a passage of scripture, I believe it's in John chapter seven, where he says this, that, if anyone desires to do his will, referring to the Father, okay. if anyone is desirous to do the will of the Father, he will know of the doctrine 
whether it is from God or whether it comes from man. So here's the thing. When I was looking into doing my studies to becoming a, a Christian, um, and I was studying the issue of whether I should observe Sabbath or not, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a beautiful day, by the way. Uh, everyone, if you meet a lot of people, they'll complain about how they don't have enough time or anything like that. Guess what? The Sabbath says, this is the time to rest. Now, someone may say, well, you know, that's your Sabbath. It's on Saturday. I, I disagree. It's, it's the Lord's Sabbath. I didn't choose it. He chose it. Uh, it's a date that he set. Not I, I didn't set it. He set it. And so I, I just, I'm just... I'm just following what he said for me to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, and for some who would say, well, the Sabbath doesn't matter, a day doesn't matter, I would point you back to, to the Garden of Eden and, and the devil would say, well, a tree doesn't matter. Yep. You see? So if a tree mattered, then a day must also matter because God said, God said something about this tree mm -hmm. that we should not eat of it. God says something about this day. And so as I was studying, mm -hmm. um, the thought came to me, which would be easier? For me to say, you know what? People are saying it doesn't matter. And even though I can't find it in the scripture that, 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 that what they're saying is, is correct, I'm going to follow what the people say because the majority is, is not observing it. Now, mind you, I did not talk about, I'm not talking about the going to church on Sunday. I'm talking about the observance of the Sabbath because mm -hmm. there are many people who observe God's Sabbath even though they still go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So you can go to church on Sunday, you can go there on Monday, you can go there on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But God is just saying, hey, the seventh day, seventh day is mine. It's, it's, my, it's my time. And I, I, I have an appointment with you each and every week. And I, I, and I would like to meet with you during this time. There's something special about the seventh day. Mm -hmm. There's just, there is something special about the seventh day. And, and, and quickly, let me just jot, push this in there. The first day God ever spent with humanity, and for my audience, you can look it up, is day number seven. The first day. Man was created on day six. Eve was the, 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 the they would say the crowning act of creation, but the crowning act of creation was not Eve. The crowning act of creation was a day of worship. Because after God created Adam, then he created Eve, and she was called Eve because she was the mother of all living. This was, she was created towards the end of the day. And as the sun was setting, in Hebrew culture, as the sun sets, one day ends and immediately the next day begins because the evening comes first before the morning, you know, the night before the day. So the evening and the morning is the first day. Evening and the morning is the second day. And so as the evening is setting, they're transitioning out of day six and going right into day number seven. And God says, this is the first. And so God says, I'm not doing anything else but spending time with these new children that I just created. And so Adam and Eve, from this day forward, every seventh day, I will meet with you like this. And so it was forgotten throughout a time period and God brought it back to them through Moses and says, hey, in order for me to lead you out of Egypt, you need to stop, be, you need to stop acting like slaves. Mm -hmm. And this is good for our, for, for our, for our uh, 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 African-American community. Mm -hmm. In order for God to deliver you out of your situation, out of your problem, out of your slavery, you need to first stop acting like a slave. Even though you're, you may be still enslaved, okay. but stop acting like a slave. Mm -hmm. You see, you got to start acting like you're free. And so when Moses came to the children of Israel, the Bible says he went first to the <coughs> elders, <coughs> he went first to the elders mm -hmm. and explained to them what God had said. And then he went into Pharaoh and Pharaoh said mm -hmm. something very interesting. Pharaoh said to him, I know you, I know what you're doing. You're making the people rest from their labors. The original mm -hmm. language says you're making the people Shabbat from their labors. You see, you, mm -hmm. God is saying, you, you, you got to stop acting like a slave okay. uh, and then I, I, so that I can begin the process of, of setting you free. And so the seventh day is, is, very, is, is a key point uh, with God. Um, and so for me, it would have been easier for me to just say, you know what, I'm going to disregard it. But I decided that, you know what, 
it is more difficult for me to give up my time to spend not just being at church but also spending it with family and and taking the time to go apart and put away the things that I normally do during the rest of the week you know going shopping and doing laundry and and uh, and watching uh, mm -hmm. sports and you know all the secular things that I could do six days a week this day I want to spend this day with God and be revived and be refreshed for the challenges for the upcoming week mm -hmm. and so and so it's more it's more difficult for me to to bring myself into that subjection than for me to just say, you know what, okay, I'll just go to church for two mm -hmm. hours and then I can go do whatever I want to do, you see. And mm -hmm. so Jesus said to the disciples, to, to, the, to the scribes and Pharisees, if you desire to do God's will, you will know that this is true. And so for anybody out there, I would say taste and see mm -hmm. whether the Lord is good in this area or not. And I can guarantee you the promise that he gave to, to his disciples where he says, you will have rest for your soul. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and you will have rest. You will have rest. Imagine a day that you have no agenda but to just praise and worship the Lord. That whole day. Mm -hmm. Not just not for two hours or three hours, but for 24 hours from the setting of the sun the day before, Friday evening, all the way to Saturday evening. Just, just, just to bask in, in God. Because the reality is, if you do that, you're preparing yourself for eternity. Because mm -hmm. guess whose presence you will ever be in, in mm -hmm. eternity. And so one day a week, you're just getting practice. <laughs> you're just getting, not a two hour, you don't go visit God for two hours and then go do something. No, 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 you're getting practice for what eternity is going to be like. As Isaiah 66 says that, you know, from one, from one uh, new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come and worship before me, says the Lord. So it's, a, it's, 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 it's the best gift outside of the Holy Spirit that we, that we could have. And I apologize for being so long-winded to the answer to your question, but again, uh, that's what pastors can be sometimes. Well, <laughs> this is unedited. You know, what people hear is what they get, you <laughs> okay. know. If you can enlighten us on uh, the Trinity, I think there's a, a people, a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. have problems with that, you know. I hmm. think you kind of went through it, but just uh, I want you to home in on it there. Oh, wow. Um, I, I, can't, I cannot tell you, um, mm -hmm. I cannot tell you my, <clears throat> this is a, a, a such a deep subject. We need a whole program on it. No, you need you need eternity. For <laughs> it. You need eternity for it. Okay. Uh, the best, the most simplest way I could I could s share this, as as I've seen in the scripture, um, you have in Matthew chapter three, mm -hmm. um, verses thirteen and onward and so forth, where Jesus is being baptized. Okay. All right. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is deity. Okay. Right. He is God. The Bible says the Father speaks from heaven. So that's one location, heaven. The voice came from heaven. Okay. And then the spirit in the form of a dove descends upon him. So you have the spirit in the middle of the air. And then the son is in the water. Three separate locations. So that means that you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three separate locations. Some people have taught that when Jesus came, he was really the Father that came down as a, you know, and so forth. And then when, when he went back to heaven, he was really, he's really the Holy Spirit that's coming. So, so some people think that he is God in three different forms. But he is God, three, three, he's not three gods, he is God in three. Mm -hmm. Meaning this, mm -hmm. the Chicago Bulls has 12 players but they're still called the Chicago Bulls, one okay. team. You see, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're still one team. Uh, when a man marries a woman, the Bible says that the two become one. one. And even though they're two, the Bible says that they're now one. Mm -hmm. And so you have this idea of oneness doesn't necessarily mean singularity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see. And so that's the, that's the furthest I could really take this uh, simply because for, for anyone to say they have the definite final answer as to the Trinity of who God is, then they would make God a quartet because that means that they should be added to the, the Godhead if they mm -hmm. could figure it out, <laughs> you see. Mm -hmm. but, but God is God all by himself. Uh, and, and I would say uh, your last name and your wife's last name is what carries you, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Doctor and Dr. Brooks, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So 
I would say, I would use it like this if I was talking to a child. God is his last name. Mm -hmm. One of them is Father, last name God. The other one is Jesus, last name God. The other one is Holy Spirit, last name God. The family of God, you see. So that's, that's the best way I could, I could put it. All three are God. All three are equal in power, uh, in, in everything. And the amazing thing is they don't jostle each other for positions. Mm -hmm. They don't politically try to get each other. The Son seeks to glorify the Father, and the, Father, the, the Holy Spirit seeks to glorify the Son, who's glorifying the Father. And that's how they operate. In the book of Genesis, uh, is this stated that let us make man? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. That gives you it, sta uh, it states that, um, <clears throat> you know, you have some scholars that will pretty much argue and debate that point, especially even Jewish scholars that will, that will argue and debate that point, that the word Elohim is, even though it's a plural word, uh, is, is also really in the context uh, used in a singular fashion. Mm -hmm. And so they will debate that and argue that. But there are many other passages of scripture where um, you have even uh, Joshua bowing down and worshiping an angel. Mm. You know, the, 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 the Lord of hosts shows up to him and he says, mm. are you for us or against us? And he says, I'm, I'm neither, I'm, for the, I'm, I'm, I'm the captain of the Lord host. We believe that that was the pre-incarnate Christ that showed up to Joshua. The Bible says he bowed down and he worshiped him. Mm. You see, and so, mm. uh, you know, there are other passages of scripture where it says the angel of the Lord appeared uh, unto them and so forth. And so there are, those are instances where we believe that before Jesus put on human flesh, he would show up to humanity and reveal himself as the angel of the Lord and so forth. Um, and so uh, <coughs> there, there, there are those instances as, as well. Um, but it's, it's, it's been debated ever since uh, Christ walked this earth, and it will be debated, debated long before you and I maybe are gone, and if the Lord doesn't come in, in our generation, in our time, uh, I'm sure it will be debated until we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. <laughs> now, man uh, uh, created man, and um, he, um, man put man to sleep, and he took the rib out of the mm -hmm. uh, one of Adam's rib, and he made woman, right? Mm -hmm. Now, then he told man he's given him dominion mm -hmm. over the earth, right? Yes, sir. But it appears that now uh, a woman had once that same position. <laughs> now, I don't uh, know if you want to test that one or not, but well, uh, in you know, the time that we have left. Just briefly. But, okay. Just briefly, because I did, I did write a paper on the subject, uh, the oneness of humanity. Okay. Um, dealing with the curse of humanity, uh, you know, and it started with just one simple question. Why did God pronounce those curses that he did on Adam and Eve where he said, you know, in the sweat of your brow you shall yeah, eat bread yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, the woman shall be subjected to her husband and, and so forth and so forth. Um, I want you to imagine a scale uh, or, 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 or a, uh, a beam, a balance with a pivot and that, mm -hmm. um, and God is in the center of that and okay. man is here and woman is here and everybody is balanced. Everybody is on equal footing okay. with God. But the Bible describes a situation where when Eve, if you look at the temptation of Eve, mm -hmm. the Bible says in Genesis chapter three, it says that the woman saw, gives us about four verbs. She saw, she took, she ate, she gave. Four verbs, all that action. She saw the fruit. Mm -hmm. So we also, we also see that she, must, she heard what the serpent said. Good. So you're talking about all five senses engaged here. She heard what the serpent said, she saw the fruit, she smelt the fruit, she tasted the fruit, she touched the fruit. All five senses are engaged. Mm -hmm. And all it says of the man is, he ate. Yep. That's all it says. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he ate. Mm -hmm. Now interestingly, what you see is, the reason why she did all of those things was because what the serpent said, you will be like God. So there is an ambitiousness in, that was in Eve. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and in Eve, God needed to correct that. But in Adam, there was an irresponsibility because he knew he should not have eaten. He wasn't hungry. He was, irres he was being irresponsible, mm -hmm. but yet still he ate. So what we see is the woman trying to gain to become like God and the man becoming irresponsible. So now we have a seesaw here. Mm. The woman is, is becoming elevated and the man is pretty much being debased. And isn't that the same thing in our society right now? where not so much that there's nothing wrong with a woman needing to be at the same level as a man. However, what's happening is men 
men are lacking their responsibility and women are naturally having to step up to become both mom and dad in the home, to be become both homemaker and provider in the home. So they are, they are being forced to step up in that position because the man has abdicated his responsibility. And so what we see in society is a unbalanced. Now God says, you know what, woman, I'm going to, the, same, the devil tried to use you to bring, bring humanity down, but I'm going to use you as well. And out of you will come the Messiah. It will mm. not come from Adam, but it will come from you. The man will, be, uh, the man will, uh, man will not be involved in this. It will be God that will put Himself in a woman. The seed of the woman shall bring forth the man child. And so, however, even just because of that, I don't want you to get exalted. I will bring you back down through pain and suffering in childbirth. The very thing that the very thing that you are going to be known for and celebrated for as a woman to bring forth life into the world. It's going to happen through pain and suffering. So he brings her back down through that. And then with the man, he simply says, because you ate irresponsibly, I have to teach you to eat responsibly. Through the, so through the sweat of your brow, you're going to eat. Pastor Young, that's a you good uh, point to, to end yeah. the program on. I want to thank you very much for enlightening Lake County. Um, uh, well, Comcast uh, family is a pro probably 100,000 people. When you spoke on a radio program, it's about 800. 800,000 uh, that uh, were listening. Uh, so you have been a blessing uh, to Lake County. And the seven, not only to the Seventh Shalem, Seventh yes. day Adventist, Advent, Ad, Adventist Church, uh, 1105 uh, Pine Street, uh, Waukegan, uh, Illinois. And thank uh, Lamont Taylor uh, for the, being the producer of this show. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Community Forum. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host.